thanks for tuning into our channel. My name is Alicia, and if you've been following along, you know that my husband Dan and I and our two cats just bought the most charming home. It's 94 years old. We named her Doris. A few months back, we tackled our first big project in our house, which was refinishing our floors. We sanded them down, stained them, and ultimately everything was going great until it wasn't. <laughs> You'll have to watch part one and part two to get all the details, watch everything unfold, and see how we ultimately ended up resolving the issue. But long story short, we didn't wipe off enough of the excess stain and our floors just weren't drying fully through. They felt dry to the touch, but they were holding moisture within the plank. So when I went to apply the poly for the first time, it was actually turning the wood grain white. After a lot of research, I decided to just give the floor some time to dry. My husband got injured in the midst of all of this, so we had to kind of move on with our lives and we put our furniture back. So instead of clearing out the entire first floor, I'll be working room by room and kind of slowly getting this process done. That's the beauty of water-based polyurethane. It's low odor, so we can comfortably live in the home and, and drag out the process, if you will. And it dries really fast. So my plan is to get two coats done in this room today. So I guess we should probably get started by first cleaning these floors up. Before I can apply the polyurethane, I need to make sure our floors are clean, dry, and free of dust and debris. So I'm using my shop vac followed by a damp mop. Just want to share a couple things before getting started. So one, I put some painter's tape on my wrist. This way I can grab any cat hair or anything I see on the floor before applying the poly. To apply it, I'll be using this microfiber roller. I used this last time, but it was half inch nap. This is quarter inch nap, which makes so much more sense. I don't know how I screwed that up. So hopefully I won't get that like weird orange peel texture I was getting the first time I tried it. We'll find out. The product I'm using is called Loba Easy Finish. It's a high quality water-based coating that's recommended for high traffic residential use or even light commercial use. It comes in gloss, semi-gloss, and satin, and I chose the satin finish for a subtle sheen. First I cut in with a brush and then I pour the polyurethane directly onto the floor. I do this because water-based poly dries fast and if you work out of a tray you'll end up with little dried up pieces of poly in the mix. But you do want a tray on hand so you have somewhere to set your roller down. It's recommended to do at least three coats of water-based poly, so that's what I did. With this particular product, you can actually recoat within two to three hours. I ended up waiting about four hours in between coats just to be safe. I did my first two coats on day one and my third and final coat on day two. Before doing the third coat, I screen sanded with 180 grit paper, vacuumed, and then applied my final coat and this will just make for an extra smooth finish. As I mentioned, I'm working room by room, so I thought it would be a good idea to tape off the rooms in hopes for more of an even and accurate finish. 
but I actually don't recommend doing this and I'll show you why a little bit later in this video. By the time I did our living room, I was a lot more comfortable with this process, so you'll notice how my approach is a little different than it was before. What worked best for me was pouring the poly every three to four feet from one end of the room to the other, working in small, manageable sections so I can reach without stepping onto the wet floor. I worked in the direction of the wood grain, applying thin, even layers and overlapping each section to maintain a wet edge. Since water-based poly dries fast, you do have to work somewhat quickly, but definitely don't rush. If you saw part two of the series, you know that I attempted poly in our sunroom a while back, ran into some issues, and ultimately had to end up re-sanding and staining an area of our sunroom. So I knew it would take forever with my orbital sander, so I decided to rent a belt sander, and I hadn't personally seen anyone use a belt sander on their hardwood floors at the time. Um, but I knew it would be more powerful than the orbital sander and cheaper to rent than a drum sander. So I just kind of went for it. And as you can see, I was struggling. It was just way more powerful than I expected and felt impossible to get an even sand from one end of the room to the other because I kind of had to like shimmy along as I was using it. So at this point, I was just very frustrated because as you know, there's been a lot of setbacks with these floors and I was ready to just get them finished. Um, and I just kind of was like, all right, I'm gonna return the sander. I've since watched a video of someone using a belt sander on their floors and they were kind of doing it in a circular motion. So I kind of wish I didn't give up so quick and tried that. But as of now, we're putting a hold on this room because we, since we moved in, thought tile would be so beautiful in our sunroom, but of course the process is very intimidating. So we might even do that sooner rather than later. At this point, like the floors aren't ruined. We just need to rent a drum sander or I could maybe try my orbital sander. But right now I think we're just going to take some time to think about it and consider our options.
So it ended up costing us about $1.50 per square foot. However, it could be a lot cheaper um, for somebody else. So we ended up renting the sanders, two sanders for longer than we needed them. We probably could have gotten away with just one rental day and we did three. So we could have saved money there. And also we splurged on like protective wear and because we're staying, we were staying in the house while we did it. So we got dust barriers, heavy duty plastic sheeting, the respirator filters that block VOCs, you know, all that stuff. Um, and just some of like the equipment that we just didn't have on hand, like a broom and whatnot. So I actually have a more detailed like cost breakdown in my blog post. So I will link that in the description. Yes, you definitely can. We did and our floors turned out great. The most important thing is just to make sure that your oil-based stain has fully cured before you apply your water-based poly. Another thing is you want to make sure the products are compatible. So to do this, you can just test a small area, maybe in a closet or somewhere hidden, um, and just see how the finish turns out. I wish we did this. If we did this, I wouldn't have the issue I'm having in our sunroom right now. So. I can confidently say no to this because we have our entire second floor to do and we do plan to do it ourselves. We learned so much with our first go around and now the second time around we can redeem ourselves. <laughs> with the sanding process, we would only rent the sanders for one day because we can definitely get it done in that time so we will save some money there. Secondly, big the biggest issue was obviously with the stain. Um, this second time around, I'm sure you've probably heard of Bona products. Um, they're very well known when it comes to refinishing hard, hardwood floors. Um, they have a product, their Bona Dry Fast, I believe, which is an oil modified stain. Um, and I really want to give that a try for our next time around. And I don't know all the details with that, but as far as applying it and like wiping off the excess, if you even do that with this type of stain, I definitely wouldn't do the sponge mop method again, just because it's just too risky at this point. Um, we just don't want to have the same issues we had this last time around. Lastly, we would do this project in the spring or the fall when the temperature is somewhere between 68 and 72 outside, just because that's the ideal temperature for stain and poly to dry. We made the mistake of doing this in the winter and like having all of our windows open. So it was 50 something in here and that definitely contributed to the stain not drying. We waited five days before we put any furniture back. And when we did put our furniture back, we put felt pads on everything because we worked hard on these floors and we just really want to take care of them. So another recommendation I got from someone in my Instagram community who has a ton of experience with flooring, she said not to put any rugs down for at least 30 days. She had just seen some disastrous situations with that so we we still don't have our rugs down because i'm just again just want to be safe even with all of the setbacks and the stress that these floors cause we would do it again in a heartbeat this has been the most rewarding project we've ever done and we are just so proud that we were able to take these old hardwood floors and give them new life and they just they turned out stunning like exactly what i wanted so when we get these mean comments on youtube you know because we were vulnerable enough to share our mistakes to hopefully prevent others from doing the same it's hard to even be upset because i get to look at these beautiful floors <laughs> every single day and we learned so much throughout the process and it brings me joy that we can share what we've learned and help others who want to tackle this project on their own as well.